an entrepreneur and a business owner, I feel like this question is gonna have a different response than the okay. typical person. So do you ever bring your work home with you? I work out of home. Like <laughs> half, half of the time I work out of home and then half of the time I work out of this workspace. Um, so it's definitely a struggle, more of like a mindset thing because it is difficult to kind of separate you know, work and home. Um, but I don't separate it. Right. Um, I mean, I feel like you're doing your passion. Why would you want to? Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. You're in like the comfort of your own home, but it has its pros and cons for sure. <laughs> Could you actually give us some? Because like off the cuff, I can't even actually think about any cons. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so a con is definitely you are way less productive, I feel. Really? Um, okay. Because yeah, I felt like I was my peak performance when I was interning doing school and then had the side hustle on the side because I had a set schedule. Right. When you're o your own boss and you're only accountable to yourself, it's a lot harder to kind of get things done because you're just like, oh, you know, I'll do it later. I'll Let me just go out to run real quick. Yep. And then you get back home and you're just like, oh, no, let me stretch a little <laughs> bit. And you're just like, oh, no, I'll eat some ice cream for like <laughs> 10 minutes and then right. I'll do that. And then it's just like... I'm not doing the things I'm supposed to be doing at all. Um, so getting into those ruts, basically every single day, right. um, those unproductive streaks in the day, um, I could definitely do without those. Totally. Um, but yeah, it's just a matter of, I guess, yeah, holding yourself accountable and yeah, having purpose and um, actually fostering the motivation within yourself to go out and do things. Um, but yeah, it's difficult. <laughs> Absolutely, and I guess I see the wisdom now because I experienced the same thing as well. Yeah. Having an actual office space and the this is my first time being to an end company, mm -hmm. you know, property. This is pretty cool. It yeah, re really dope. reminds me of we work. Yeah, yeah. Plug for Andy. Yeah, <laughs> total <laughs> plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so if you don't mind me asking, what was it like working behind the scenes of? TEDx Chelsea Park. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm still working kind of behind the scenes for TEDx Chelsea Park. Plug for TEDx Chelsea Park. <laughs> Plug for a future TEDx oh talk. My <laughs> yeah, for my future TEDx <laughs> talk. Um, no, but it's super exciting. Um, we're the first TEDx uh, event in the new Hudson Yards location. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, so it's so cool. Um, June 22nd. All um, right. We have a really great lineup that we haven't announced yet. Sounds um, like a concert. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. If you haven't been to a TEDx event, like definitely go check it. It's a lot different um, than actually, you know, watching a TEDx talk online, being there, it's an experience in and of itself. Um, so it's been, it's been um, really interesting being behind the scenes because you get to see, um, I guess, the boring parts of the behind the scenes event, you know, um, seeing the event organizer trying to put all the logistics together, um, you know, even down to the tiniest things like the giveaway bag that people are going to leave with. You know, what companies are going to go I inside the giveaway bag? What do they want in exchange for putting a cookie inside of that? So it, I had no idea there was a giveaway yeah, bag. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's tiny things like that that kind of cultivate, you know, the, the entire experience in and of itself, you know, kind of working with people through their speeches because people have great ideas, um, but a problem, well, not a problem, but like a common thing of, uh, stumbling block that people have is just refining their idea to our point about like value proposition and communicating um, you know what your value proposition is the main idea behind what you're trying to get across um, is just refining it down to one unique concept that you can speak to from your own experience and right. that um, you can provide value to the audience um, so you're not just like talking about you know um, diversity and inclusion, just like everyone else, you know, what's going to make that speech actually good and unique to your specific experiences? Um, and, you know, what what is the community going to take away from this? Um, so just, yeah, it's really interesting being behind the scenes. You get to, you have a lot more respect for the people who put on actual events because it's all volunteer based too, which is something I guess a lot of people don't know about because um, I'm really passionate about volunteering and, you know, kicking back and, again, you know, mentoring and sharing what I've already learned with other people. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, it's been an interesting experience, but I'm super, super grateful for it. So this hearing you talking about it, it sounds like you're totally prepared to give a TED Talk. <laughs> and out of curiosity, if you were to give a TED Talk, what topic do you think it would be? That's a good question. Um, Instilling kindness into the into the tech industry. So underrated. I know it really is. Um, I don't know. 
because again, we were talking off camera, I feel like tech is so like an, an echo chamber. You get the same thoughts, same ideas, and it's just spewed um, in all different kinds of directions. And we need to give other people, underrepresented people that don't even know what tech is, a chance at, you know, they're at bat. We need to give them more opportunities. Um, but something I'm passionate right now is just preaching awareness about all the opportunities in tech, um, especially to, to little kids. I'll be going to, uh, I'm a volunteer at uh, Technologicas, um, partnership with NC Wit and AT&T. Um, nice. So basically they go out um, and we have individual workshops to kids, um, not in the, the tri-state area, so they wouldn't have known about you know these opportunities that tech presents in the first place um, so it's you know meeting them where they are and being like you don't have to go into tech but this is where everything is shifting and it's good for you to you know know about this and here are all the opportunities that are, you know you have within tech because it's not limited to just coding absolutely because it's really not like i didn't even know that what i was doing i didn't even know my job existed right. these kids aren't even going to know that you know, their job is not gonna exist until in another 10, 15 years. Um, so just preaching awareness um, about all the different positions in tech, you know, what it means to be um, a good employee, a good leader, um, and just approaching tech at a more, uh, yeah, a, a kinder level, um, and not just using people for profits. Um, yeah. Because that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And un unfortunately, a habit in the in the business world, especially when you get into the, the billions of dollars category, yeah, that's just kind exactly. of a practice, right? Yeah. And then, because you kind of alluded to it just now, so that's awesome that you're working with kids and developing their young minds yeah. and concepting so their exciting. minds. Like, I definitely wish, like, more people could actually experience that yeah. because I feel like you're creating more entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, creating more entrepreneurs and even at, like, at a basic level, not even about like entrepreneurs. Um, again, it's just about awareness and giving kids you know, the confidence that they can do this. Um, they can have successful careers because even then I feel like that's something that's not even talked about. Right. Because like, a lot of people struggle. Like, <laughs> they struggle. And a lot of you know jobs don't have the right work-life balance. Or, exactly, yeah. and then you know another thing leading into that it's kind of a separate thing, but you know they say um, the most important thing um, to a child's development isn't even their family when they're they're young. It's about their friends. Uh -huh. um, so talking to you know their classmates or friends as a whole and collective and kind of empowering them to be like this is a billion dollar industry, you know, you can get yours too. Like Evan Spiegel, like Mark Zuckerberg, yeah, they're all great, but like this is for you too. Right. So just, you know, talking more about like inclusiveness and diversity and just preaching, you know, these opportunities are here for you if you're willing to take them and have the skill set for them. So it's something I'm really excited about. Exactly, and actually reminds me of Silicon Valley. Like yeah. when you're working for another company and then you can actually, so many people are founding and starting up after working on, yeah. on projects for these massive mm -hmm. you know, tech empires. That's um, it's funny because uh, that's the case for a lot of you know, the top apps on the, to the, top, the top charts. They work at you know, Facebook, Microsoft, Google, and then they have a nice little side project on the side and they use the, their salary money to start funding into their exactly. own thing. And then they're like, I got a dip. Like <laughs> I'm making like millions of dollars on my own just by this one app. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's, it's an incredible, time to to be working in the, in the tech space to say the least and to be alive now yeah and be alive because like how you alluded to earlier like during the the madman era mm -hmm. you know tech you know technology wasn't where it is now with social media and the internet so imagine those you know those that admin madmen during at this time or you exactly know, like that. i mean there's that and then a kind of a separate topic of the, the topic of health and fitness about how we're so aware you know we're not eating you know mcdonald's like and the madmen ever we're not smoking we're not or doing, drinking every we're, five yeah minutes. exactly drinking at every meeting i couldn't imagine drinking in a meeting <laughs> like that's insane i mean your liver's getting to work out yeah exactly <laughs> um but yeah so we're really um we're doing things in our best interest so to say, I feel like people have a, a really, you know, bad outlook on the world. It's just like the world is a terrible place. All these killings, murders, blah blah blah. But like, we're doing a lot better. Like, just focus on yourself, um, and you know, start seeing the world through a positive absolutely point, and it'll work wonders for you. Like, it really will. A thousand percent. Just to consciously see things positively, because 
I feel like unfortunately people have a problem facing the truth, which is why they have such a pessimistic outlook. Yeah. But if you have a a positive spin on the truth, mm-hmm. it's kind of like spiritual armor. Like exactly. It's just like, oh, this is the truth, this is the reality, mm-hmm. and this is what I'm capable of in this reality, and possibly even more. Exactly. So just working on self improvement and striving to be, you know, a better version of yourself every day. That's like my my screensaver. Awesome. <laughs> on here. Oh, I definitely want to see that. <laughs> um, uh, hold on. Okay, here. Um, so this is like the equation uh, nice. to be like you're better off to be one percent, one percent happier every day, and you'll be thirty-seven percent a better version of you by the end of the year. Um, but you know, if you're negative one percent um, every single day, you'll be at a, a you'll be a, a, a 0.3% better than you were this year, next year. Um, so just working on those, just working on yourself every day is super important. That's so cool. And are you aware of vortex-based ba- mathematics? No. <laughs> so this actual equation, it kind of illustrates that point. So when you get to the, the answers, so three, uh, 37.8. Mm-hmm. So three plus seven is sorry. No, no, it's three, three plus seven is ten, and mm-hmm. then plus eight is eighteen. So it's anything that's three, six, or nine that equals the three, six, and nine. Oh, see, I'm not good with math and data. <laughs> and the thing is, I'm I'm terrible at math as well. But it's the only type of math that makes sense to me. <laughs> oh my god, no, but that's so cool though. Yeah. yeah. So one of the cool concepts that you educated me on was the difference between marketing and advertising and branding mm-hmm. in the Apple App Store versus the Google Play App Store. Could you let everyone know the int- the cool intricacies and don't hold back on your nerdiness. Just, <laughs> no, just let it fly. Um, <laughs> well, I guess at a basic level, Android products are priced extremely low. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're able to capture, you know, a lot more of the worldwide market. Um, and, you know, Google Play is more game based. I think it's about 60% of the entire App Store is you know, just games, and it's quickly go. It's like rising, like through the charts, with the rise of like Twitch, esports, the mobile gaming. Absolutely. Um, you know, Fortnite. It's just incredible. Like, talk about jobs that didn't exist 15 years ago. Like the people actually playing video games that could have had careers now. Exactly. Um, so that's kind of like the Google Play. But my, I, I guess my personal favorite. Um, I, I can market well on, bo- on both. Um, App well, stores. you know, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I feel like the Apple App Store is really more focused on branding mm-hmm. um, as a whole and, you know, making sure you're offering the most premium uh, product to your users and the people that are going to be actually using the app, which is why, um, you know, uh, apps on the App Store are typically, you know, higher priced. Um, so, yeah, they're targeted at. Uh, you know, the U.S. market, Canada, Australia, people that have um, a lot of passive income, um, not necessarily, you know, kind of third world countries like the Philippines, uh, um, India, where I'm more focused on like Google Play. Right. Um, but th- that's, again, more of like societal, I guess, trends play into apps or optimization and, and fun things like that. But yeah, it's, I can, that's a whole other podcast too, just like branding on the brand, how to brand your app and things of that nature. Absolutely. And hopefully coming soon, right? Coming soon, yeah. <laughs> so you actually reminded me of a question that I wanted to ask based upon the Huffington Post actually came up with a study like two or three years ago saying that in three to five years from then, there were going to be three to five billion more people on the internet. Mm-hmm. So thinking about countries like developing nations, as you said, I'm sure all those countries are going to be seeing a lot more people online. Mm-hmm. So and thus you'll see a lot more people needing apps. Exactly. A lot more people needing apps. And especially, you know, the people in those countries, they're not going to be developing apps to monetize people. Right. They're not going to be developing social networks or, you know, very fluffy apps where they're just looking to make a quick buck off of you. They're, the people in those countries, I feel like they're going to be creating apps that actually solve needs for their community. Um, so I guess in that sense, uh, it's, it's extremely important that they know how to go about, you know, the whole app economy, you know, app store optimization, learning how to grow a community for this app, and just learning the business fundamentals of app marketing, um, especially for those people. And those people aren't, you know, unfortunately, they're not going to be the ones that these huge agencies want to work with, that Absolutely. these consultants want to work with, because at the end of the day, it's just like, it's just some guy from 
where the Philippines, why should we care about him? As opposed to, you know, these apps that are already making billions of dollars, Ob money attracts money, you know? Exactly. <laughs> They're not gonna, people aren't gonna, you know, want to help these people out. So, you know, going hand in hand with like my, the kindness mindset that I wanna start, you know, injecting into tech more, it's just like we all need to be um, mentors and just share the knowledge that we have at like a, a very, very basic level. Absolutely, and then everyone, you know, can come up together. Like obviously, you already have a, a multi-billion dollar head start. So you can at least, you know, share a little bit exactly. of knowledge. Because imagine, you know, I could totally see you working with an app developer who is in developing nations and has an app for people there who can find clean drinking water or even food like that. Like how, exactly. how awesome would that be? It doesn't even cost anything. Right. It's just a thought. It's knowledge. At the end of the idea, like ideas are priceless. That's why I don't charge basically for consulting because I have worked you know on those types of projects before people that didn't have any money just like who am I to charge you you just want to do good for yourself like that's it yeah. so like why should I not share the not like why should I charge you that's why I don't understand like that's another reason why I do the free proposals too so it's just like any bit of help that I can give you like I will go above and beyond to kind of do that for you. Yes, it has bitten me in the butt so many times, <laughs> but you know, I'd rather go that way than you know, charge $200 an hour for consulting. I understand. Yeah. And then also Aptuitive has a blog section. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. I actually read the aspect about how to, essentially what you do, but for free. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I kind of actually saw it as a very authentic upsell for your services because mm -hmm. at a certain point, then you get this, you know, you're starting to read a whole bunch of like app store optimization jargon that I completely don't understand. So I would have to come to you to be like, okay, what do oh, I, I do? I didn't even realize it. Was like <laughs> Which is, I feel like it's great. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely another like huge selling point. But yeah, I want to start, you know, developing a lot more content because that's definitely that's another like struggle I'm going through right now is like uh, I know I'm a good writer and uh, people compliment me a lot for like the writing that I do because it is helpful to a lot of people but it's just you know dealing with the everyday clients sending out proposals having to deal with like the money and that type of absolutely like, the grind so to say but so I've been like letting the content uh, take a back seat but I need to start picking it up but yeah that's something I want to do is start developing out the, the blog a lot more so putting down marketing tactics that people can actually use and see results from. Um, and then also, you know, speaking more towards um, the kindness approach I want, you know, I want to see more in tech. Um, those issues that um, that people don't really want to talk about, because um, again, like people are really, I guess, um, upfront, uh, not upfront, but like very careful about being an agency and very saying cautious. certain things. Yes. I'm just like, if you're being turned off by the idea of, you know, kindness, I don't want to work with you in the first place. So you're making my job a lot easier <laughs> anyways. Exactly. So, um, yeah, content is something I definitely need to get back into more. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, because Hopefully. she has a lot of great content. So. <laughs> <laughs> so out of curiosity, from your expert perspective, you're in the, you're in the captain's chair, right? Okay. <laughs> Where do you see the app industry going in the next three to five years? Okay, I know yeah. you probably get this question like all the time. No, not really. Um, but it, I mean, it's been it's been like this ever since it started. So I mean, as you see a trend, it's obviously gonna start staying like that for a while. You, I don't see our phones going anywhere anytime soon. Apple, Google, Facebook, exactly. Netflix—they're all behemoths. Like it's gonna be a matter of you know them innovating on different devices. But I mean, we've had our phones for what 10, 15 years now. It feels um, like so long. It, it is long. So you know, you see AR, VR, um, wearable tech. Um, that's you know, your watches. So um, I've been seeing a lot more Apple Watch um, apps and integrations with you know, your your day to day life and making your life a lot easier. So voice and things of that nature. Sure. Um, so my thing is, I think that tech is going to get obviously it's a lot more closer to our bodies um, because you know the more data people have on you, the the more profitable <laughs> their companies are going to be too, especially for advertisers. Absolutely. Um, exactly. That's why uh, it's funny if you heard like Facebook is working on a mind reading tool. <gasps> yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> especially with all your data breaches, where like where is that's that going to go? That's what I'm saying. Oh my god! Don't even get me started yeah. on Facebook. Facebook is like that's the one conversation that I'm just like. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, our devices will start getting a lot closer to our bodies. Um, and the app economy will, you know, uh, gaming will still be going, I think. But you know, more 
of the health and fitness apps are going to start popping up even more. Um, the the um, the intersection between health and technology, that's where I think the, the biggest play is. Um, I can definitely see that, especially with VR. And even when eventually it becomes more uh, mass production in terms of hologram technology, I feel like that is definitely going to go there. Exactly. So, um, yeah, the health and fitness is going to be big aside from, you know, just the gaming industry because it's the only, they say that, you know, the things are, that are inevitable in life are taxes and death. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're going to try to prolong death for as long as possible. And that's where, you know, the health and fitness category of the app store is going to come in. Um, yeah. So I guess that's my my forecasting or the, the, trend, like <laughs> the tech forecast the tech forecast for today <laughs> so uh, around the corner will be 5g networks mm -hmm. and do you see any i guess growth or expansion because more data would be allowed through for i guess downloads and, and whatnot uh i have no idea <laughs> i mean i was just curious no no i have no idea <laughs> like when it comes down that's i guess uh, uh, elite. This is of mine is like I don't understand like the really technical side of tech. <laughs> I'm more of like the fluffy branding, um, not really fluffy, but like the branding. How do you communicate the value of this actual tech? I'm more of that side, um, but like the tech and the coding that goes so over my head. You wouldn't even believe. Like I have so much respect for those actual tech people who are, who are yeah. coders and whatnot. Exactly. I mean, one of my best friends, a coder in Silicon Valley. Shout out to Carlos. So yes, nice. but yeah. he he's actually tutoring me or mentoring oh, cool. me awesome. in, in the yeah. industry so it's, it's pretty so cool. cool yeah yeah and then because i guess the only thing i have reservations about 5g because obviously most of us have 4g or 4g lt mm -hmm. on our wireless providers is the cellular radiation apparently it's amplified amplified on that so i'm not necessarily you know running to the hills to get the the 5g yeah that's another thing too i mean going into health and fitness is that people are aware of like the bad things of tech so i mean we have to know our limits at some point that's another thing where like ethics come into play because it's like you're frying these people at the expense of you know more data being like exactly. thrown in their face so it's like you know where do you stop that's the biggest thing i guess with tech because people always are like, you know, move fast and break things. Um, yeah. but like keep innovating, keep innovating. But when do you stop? Like there's no, there's no one or there's no set rule book that Apple or Google have where it's like, that's not okay. Right. Um, so yeah, that's something, a passion of mine, of me personally after I, I do want to sell app to it and move on to do uh, other things is that's, uh, um, so, uh, tech ethics is something I, I want to, you know, get my hands in. Uh, Definitely. So. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. And I, I think of places like CERN, like even though it's so cool in terms of the concept. It's terrifying. <laughs> but, you know, I don't want like you guys to create a black hole by accident exactly. and be like, oops, sorry. And you can't really take I'm it back. I'm just like, I see that. I'm just like, why do we even need to do this in the first place? Because <laughs> like, it's like Atlantis 2.0. Like. Yeah, I know. But it's just like, why? We have so many problems that need to be directly addressed now. And you're just, I guess so focused on innovation just for the sake of being focused on innovation, just for the sake of having an innovator title or, you know, being compared to the next Elon Musk. It, 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 with yeah. tech, it's all coming down to status. Definitely. Um, and, you know, being the CEO, being the founder of the next big thing. Being uh, Gavin Belson. Exactly, right? Gavin <laughs> Belson. Going down into the history books for being yeah. the innovator of this big thing. But it's just like, do we really need this right now? No. I mean, that's, that's a great question. I, I get a lot of flack from my friends, especially my friend Carlos, who is a big lover of NASA. Okay. But I'm like, if NASA's budget actually went into underwater exploration, because I'm not sure if you noticed, but over 90% of the world is underwater, mm -hmm. and yet over 90% of it is still undiscovered, but we're still going out in space. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, seeing what black holes look like up close are cool, but I feel like wouldn't it be cool to explore underwater, like undersea? Yeah, exactly. And then you can actually be building things that could actually mm -hmm. make the Earth more exactly. more green by yeah. just you know staying on Earth. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's not to like undermine anyone's like well, work yeah. or what they did. Yeah, but now just like working on issues that actually need work on right now in this very moment, and not just yeah doing things for the sake of doing things, and to have something cool attached to your name. That's something. It's a big issue with tech. <laughs> Absolutely, and doing the right thing and having a little more kindness you'll get exactly. that status yeah anyway. exactly yeah yeah but uh yeah thank you so much for making the time for us this was so much fun yeah, my pleasure i feel like we have to do this again okay. even if it's to make <laughs> content for aptitude <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> totally you should do it. I will not turn down the content. So Absolutely. Yeah, anytime. So thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. Of course. <laughs> oh god, that was so bad. <laughs> I know, right? Totally nerded now, but we love it. So Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Josh. I really appreciate it. No worries. Cool.